Our final honoree tonight is Dr. Peter Agre. Dr. Agre is a foremost researcher in chemistry, biology, and medicine. Whew, I read his CV, it's really impressive. <laughs> he is widely known for his research in red blood cell biochemistry and for helping to discover aquaporins. I didn't know what that was until yesterday. Does anybody else in the room besides the good doctor know what that is? I'm gonna do my very best to explain, but I'm sure he would do a much better job. It is a family of water channel proteins which help explain many human bodily functions, things that we need every day, such as kidney concentration. It has also been implicated in multiple disorders, such as cataracts and obesity. So literally, it affects everything in your body. In 2003, Dr. Agra shared the 2003 Nobel Prize in chemistry with Robert McKinnon. Agra is a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the Institute of Medicine. After numerous academic posts at renowned institutions such as the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and Duke Medical Center, Agra joined the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in 2008, where he is now university professor and director of the Malaria Research Institute. Could you do more? I mean, really, it's amazing what you've accomplished. And also director, I mean, I can't even say half of this stuff, and director of the NIH International Center for Excellence in Malaria Research for Zambia and Zimbabwe. I mean, it's amazing. We honor you this evening for your incredible scientific research that can potentially prevent and treat glaucoma, diabetes, asthma, cystic fibrosis, and cognitive heart failure. This man is gonna save our lives. Please come to the stage. Well, th thank you for all the kind things you've said, and Louise and the Foundation, thank you for this award and for this wonderful summit that's occurring. It's very important. Uh, let me just set the bar a little lower, if I may. <laughs> I think anybody who's had a full bladder sitting in the economy se section of an airliner when the seatbelt light is on will recognize that aquaporins are kind of important. <laughs> And a few other things. Well, I was asked to say just, just a few words about innovation and creativity. And I'd like to say first thank you on behalf of myself and all other scientists to you, the taxpayers, who make it all possible. <laughs> the grants that come from the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation are pivotal to what we do. And also philanthropy. I'm privileged to be the director of the Johns Hopkins Malaria Research Institute due to a generous gift from Mayor Michael Bloomberg and the Bloomberg Family Foundation. So they make it possible for us to do this work. <laughs> Let me thank them. Now, innovation and creativity oftentimes is described as something unforeseen that succeeded, and a lot of things don't succeed. But I'm gonna tell you a little story Oh, uh, the 2003 Nobel Prize happened to occur. And it may sound a little mundane because uh, oftentimes the ideas we get are from people all around us, our colleagues certainly, but also our friends and our family. And this issue of work-life balance, which we all understand to be very important, sometimes is a little blurred. So I was a faculty member at Johns Hopkins, my wife Mary, who is right here in front of me. We have four wonderful children. And Mary always organized family camping trips to the national parks. This was very popular in the Agri family life. We took the children to Yosemite, we took them to the Grand Canyon, to Yellowstone, to the Smoky Mountains. And after doing this for several years, we said, children, next year we'll let you choose the national park of your choice. And they said, Disney World, <laughs> which happens not to be a national park at all. But we compromised, we went to the Everglades, where Carly, our youngest, was, I think, bitten by every mosquito in South Florida. We went to Disney World. We had a lot of fun. And then we stopped on our way back to Baltimore in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where we, at one point, lived and worked and had dear friends. 
And it was a break in the travels. Mary got to chat with her friends. The children played with playmates. And I visited with some colleagues. We had been working in the laboratory on red blood cell membrane proteins, and it discovered a new one which was very interesting. We knew it was genetically related to proteins expressed in diverse organisms, the brains of insects, the roots of plants. We thought it must be of very fundamental importance, but we hadn't a clue what it did. And it was really that trip where we stopped on our way back from Disney World, we had a conversation with John Parker, a professor at the University of North Carolina, who put it all together. Peter, you said this protein is in red blood cells. It's a, this is an extremely water permeable tissue. It's in renal tubules. Again, water permeability, the roots of plants. Have you considered this is the long sought water channel which physiologists have been searching for for a century? And in truth, it never dawned on me that there was such a thing as a water channel uh, that we may have discovered it. So really, it was the wisdom of others and the chance events made possible due to the children's requests that made it all happen. So I think we should perhaps not take ourselves so seriously, but we should think in terms of the global is issues of science, giving opportunities to young scientists, letting them and their families have a great adventure, and who knows, something good may come of it. I'm very grateful to be here tonight, and I really look forward to tomorrow. Thank you so much.